my name is Arina Matveva and tonight I'm glad to present to you this project which is called Ring Air. It was started in Budapest last November. So Ring Air is about understanding and monitoring the city's environmental quality and specifically we're talking about air, air quality or air pollution. Uh, so this project was born during the Biohackathon uh, which was organized by the Makerspace and what keeps us going and what keeps us being motivated is that we were also recognized as the best project there. So we were looking to create a, a social enterprise or a startup. And this is part of our happy team during the biohackathon. So why Ring Air? Uh, what are the problems that we're facing currently? First of all, it's the persistent and increasing health problems that uh, citizens are facing in European cities and specifically talking about Budapest um, it's a limited availability on, of data, of real-time data on air quality and only the data that are available are aggregate and average data which are collected um, by stationary devices so the solutions that Ring Air offers uh, is collecting real-time microdata on air quality uh, using portable smart devices, uh, a smart bell, so-called, then storing the big data on blockchain and streaming the data for the public. So here, creating daily alerts can be on social media and then creating also an app which would allow us uh, to visualize a citywide air pollution map, which would be real-time. So a little bit about our vision. Uh, truly what we are going for is enacting the citizens' right for clean air. And doing this, how do we do this? We, we want to raise awareness uh, among the public in the area of air quality and environmental quality more generally. Um, empower the population in their decision making. Also boost bottom-up, solution-oriented um, collaborations. Uh, etc. And of course initiating a dialogue with the authorities. And given all of this we see Ring Air as truly a valuable part of a smart city. And it's a project that can be very easily replicable in other places. So what we do, we, we, we have a prototype for this smart bell which we distribute to the bikers. They go around the city, they collect data, real-time data, and the data is stored on blockchain. Then the data will be uh, visualized for, for the public. So what we have is a working prototype. We're working on the brand. We have a team and developing a business plan. This is not needed. So what we focus on is transparency, open source software, decentralization, and uh, blockchain technology. And also we really want to involve the public in the data collection, so initially we collaborate with bikers and also services that use bikers um, to deliver things across the city and anybody else who is walking or biking through the city. And just to show you the device that we have, the prototype. So it includes a sensor with which we're able to track uh, temperature, CO2 and other harmful gases. And there is a low-power Wi-Fi module which transfers the data directly onto the server. So, where I'm open to questions and uh, possibilities to collaborate because we're also starting to look for new members for this project. And um, thank you for your attention. Questions? Yes, questions please. We have five minutes for questions. Uh, do you have uh, data already? Yes, um, if you go to the Ring Air, to the, to the website, there is a link to, to the data. It must be the data that we... Well... This is the raw data. <laughs> So this needs to be processed and aggregated also, so that it's more... 
uh, it's accessible for more general public. So there is a timestamp and then all the different variables, the volatile, uh, no, the, yes, yes, the VOC, the temperature, the CO2, the acidity. Yes, please. Who, I would like to ask who does the, who calculates the proof of concept of the whole blockchain? Proof of concept. So who's interested to? to do the calculation like Bitcoin mining as a proof of concept in blockchain that's meant to validate proof the blockchain. Work. Proof, of proof of work. And, sorry, sorry, proof of work. So unfortunately I'm not the person who is the, uh, the blockchain professional. We have another person on the team. Um, so I would not be able to answer to you. Um, uh, let me note, thank you for this question and I'll, uh, I'll note it. Proof of work, you said, right? Yes. So, who's interested to do the proof of work? Because in okay, Bitcoin mining, you get money in return to do it. Uh, we haven't been discussing this, actually, this this part at all. <laughs> uh, okay. But that's a that's a good point to think about. Yes. Thank you. I will I will redirect it. Yes, please. Uh, and why are you using the blockchain at all? Uh, because blockchain is about uh, decentralized uh, trust. Uh, and uh, why can't you just uh, hold the data? I think uh, everyone will believe that you don't fake uh, data like CO2 emissions. And why is it needed to use blockchain? Uh, I think that's the that's um, pr principle say, decision. Uh, because it's, I, I, I see that it's not easy to trust the data nowadays and we cannot really know if it's manipulated or not. So this is the main reason for using blockchain because it's also irreversible and uh, transparent in that regard. These are, these are the reasons why we have decided to do so. But do you, uh, if, if you are, uh, there is the private key in the, in the device. And if you produce the device and put the private in it, you can know even the private keys, and then the whole blockchain system is just uh, just for the show. You know, if, if it's not uh, if it's if not the user generating the private keys, or, <laughs> I can't imagine how it's uh, protecting the mm -hmm. So. I think there was a, we were talking about a, again, I'm sorry because I'm not the professional in the, in the blockchain. Uh, from what I understood, um, the private key is not, uh, is not in the hands of the people who adapt the device. It will be the people who, um, who want to have access to the data, uh, let's say, Developers of the software, developers of the visualization software, and uh, and then uh, I think there should be some kind of uh, way of selecting also the people who, who will receive the key. Why can I buy this bell? We don't want to sell the bell. We want to give it for free. Oh. So. In this sense, we, we see this as a social benefit uh, project, social benefit oriented project. But the, the business case comes from uh, working with the data, so doing data analytics later on. Um, uh, and so for the parties who might be interested in more specific data analysis, big data analysis, or access to the data that is <coughs> more processed. But uh, the real data is always going to be free or, or that's going to be... Yes, paid. yes, yes. Oh, okay. It's free and available. <coughs> yes, please. 
Uh, my question is not related to blockchain. Uh, I'm, assuming, uh, I'm assuming you have some way of telling where each bell is located. And yes, of course. Are there privacy concerns regarding that? Or what privacy concerns? Well, I mean, if I were a user and I would have public report of where I'm located at any mm -hmm. point in time, I would be concerned. So, I suppose you have some safeguards regarding that or something like that. Mm -hmm. So, well, the the idea. Let's see. The idea was to. To have this bell, for example, on your bicycle, so in a way you you only yeah this is a big this is a question like do you take it off do you keep it on the bike so I think the idea is to keep it on the bike these are some details we we need to <laughs> figure out um, I don't have really an answer to this but this is a great question yeah thank you for raising this up. The last question, please. Uh, there was somebody in the back, yes. No, I will ask. <laughs> so in the raw data way, I didn't see any kind of uh, GPS coordinate or anything at all. How can you uh, connect these uh, informations together? How can you guarantee that this information is valid? That this information is valid? Not valid, because I can store my ringer in a very um, safe place where there is no pollution at all and I'm going around the circles, then I'm, I may be full of data. <laughs> well, we, we believe in the, in the best, in the people. <laughs> uh, no, it's a good, it's a good question. Um, there was no GPS in, in the data, you say? There was no GPS coordinates. So maybe maybe this this data came from the original prototype. It was registered and it was not yet implemented in there. I believe this is this is why this is the reason. And um, I don't have a very good solution to this. Let's say we what we the feedback that we have already is that we we talk to to the bicycle delivery companies. And they are very much keen on this idea. So I assume that because this uh, this community is so much directly affected, I would not think that somebody would try to you know abuse this. But of course, any anything can happen. Yes. Um, do you have a, an idea of how to resolve this by any chance? <laughs> no, no <laughs> yes, I know. Maybe maybe something comes up to you. Yeah, sure. I'm very we're open to the ideas. We're just starting. Okay. Thank you very much.